month of May is Asian American Sith Islander Heritage Month. But I feel like, as a culture, at least in the U.S., we don't really talk about Sith Islander Heritage that much. I honestly think we're missing out. The island of New Guinea and the territories of Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands are also Melanesian that have been separated from the Australian Aborigines for at least a few thousand years. Melanesians from these places have a very high rate of blonde hair, as high as 80% in some tribes. But that ends now. So stay tuned and get excited! It's your girl, I'm still here. Welcome back to my channel. Today is Monday, which means it's Makeup and Mythology Monday. So I, um, if you're new here, hey, I'm Dom. Just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, <laughs> uh, every Monday I sit down in my makeup while telling you the origins of a mythological story that we've loved since childhood or that you may have heard and never heard before. This one is one you've never heard of before and I'm excited about it. It's part of Asian American Pacific Highlander Heritage Month, so um, I also learn new things. That's why I made a channel, I guess. Um, <laughs> before I get started, I'm just gonna go over what I use on my face before um, um, filming. So I'm gonna make sure my lips are nice and prepped. This is Clinique Moisture Surge Lip uh, Hydro Plump Treatment, which looks nice and soft, and I also used. Um, Too Faced inject, Lip Injection Extreme. I don't really have naturally that. Like, they're naturally like, naturally, like, like medium full, so I do get a little full sometimes. And then um, for my eyebrows, I use this um, NYX Dark Brown Eyebrow Pencil. Um, and on my eye base, I used the P. Louise Base um, in Rumor 8. Things like the second to last darkest shade. I just never, I refuse to do, like do it with my foundation anymore. This is my LA Girl Pro Conceal in orange for my hyperpigmentation because I have that because acne scars and then also like I'm allergic to my glasses. Fun times. And then I set my eyes and my face with um, translucent powder from. Beauty Bakery in the color Oat. Look at how white that is. Look at how white that is. It's very white, so it's just for baking. So I'm not gonna go over because I'm gonna go over the story now from this point forward, but if you wanna know any products, you're gonna listen down below in the description, okay? So I double checked to make sure that I wasn't like mixed up cultures. So it is true that people who are Polynesian are considered Pacific Highlander. There's actually three different like regions of Pacific Highlander slash Polynesian and their names come from Greek because of course like everything is Greek it feels like because literally Polynesia means many islands in Greek. You want polyamory, uh, polyester, right? <laughs> and then you have Micronesia, which means like small islands. And then you have Melanesia, which literally means like island of like melanated people, or mel <laughs> island of dark skinned people, which is awesome. But the story we're talking about literally does for certain come from Polynesia. We're talking today about the story of Ranji and Papa which is the creation story of the Maori people of New Zealand. Having skin is difficult, you guys. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. So the thing I find most interesting about the Polynesian people, that I think the people, you know, in Micronesia and I believe Melanesia as well, is that there were all at one point like voyagers. It's like they came from one country and settled down somewhere else and then just like stayed there. So the Mori people were believed to have first inhabited New Zealand sometime around 1300 Common Era or AD. 
the more people believe to have migrated from what is now Tahiti. Well, that's just like a, like that's like a prediction or like a guess. Take a guess, but I guess nonetheless. Remember the Maori people, who are Polynesian, Pacific Islander people. So people um, of each tribe called Iwi um, trace their lineage back to either parent, their father or their mother, and pledge allegiance to a chief uh, leader of their tribe. People have some interesting customs. They greet each other by pressing their foreheads together. Um, and I believe rubbing their noses. I believe similar to the Eskimo people, which I believe was the Eskimo people or the certain native people of Alaska versus Polynesian. I'm like, my question is always like, what makes that difference though? But you know what? It's for another day. It's for another day. Te Reu, which is the Maori language, was never actually written down originally. It was all just passed down through oral tradition. Hanji, traditional Maori food, was made underground. And this was made, like, usually it's like raw meat and vegetables that were put into a um, a pot on a, on a pit of rocks within the ground. That's how they traditionally made their food. Like many uh, Polynesian cultures, tattoos are usually used to identify someone's social status um, in their hierarchy, in the tribe, in the society. These are used to mark social status, family affiliation, family um, affiliations, and then also affiliations with any other parts of the tribes. Um, wait, what is happening? What is happening? Tamako was what the original tattooing process is called, and it was actually used by like carving the Indian people's skin with um, old teeth, really old sharp teeth, which is odd and strangely fascinating. The Mexican dance of the <laughs> that's a simple name. The Mexican dance of the Mori people is called. Kapahaka, and it's really important to use um, in their culture for expressing their heritage and also for telling stories, which we're about to um, learn about one today. And also, the Mori people are considered some of the world's best storytellers. Known as the Tangana Wata people of the land of Aotearoa, land on the long white cloud. <laughs> And the story of creation centers around, the story of creation for the Mori people centers around um, two central characters, um, or two central deities. Um, the first one is Ran Jin Nui, the sky father, and then the other is Papa Tuanuku, the earth mother. And we're just gonna call them from now on Ranji and Papa for short, and according to the myth, um, in the beginning of time, they held like they were. Since the beginning of time, in the beginning of time, they were held each other so quite so tightly in an embrace. Um, and they held each other so tightly that actually everything was dark around them. The story goes that they held it like they're that they were Earth and Sky, Sky Daddy and Earth Mommy were holding each other so tightly in such a tight embrace that there was no light and the other was in complete darkness. But now, somehow, even though they're in this tight embrace, they weren't managed to make children, which of course is fascinating to me. And so basically, Lee, Ranji, and Papa had a lot of children that lived between them, between their embrace, which I feel like would be kind of squish, but you know what? It's not my business. And you know, the kids kind of wondered like, okay, like I'm kind of tired of it being dark all the time, you guys. Like what can we do to make like our lives not be dark all the time? Like, cause they're like, like one of them wondered like, okay, like what is the light like? Like, where's that girl? I wanna meet the light. You don't have none right now. Cause our mother and father are so tightly embraced that there is no light. No 
the longest thing in Dark is trying to debate. Uh, they start debating how they can separate their parents and, you know, see the light. So, the fiercest of the children, Tuamakte Tonga, um, suggests that they kill their parents. Um, like, that escalated quickly. Like, we gotta go straight to murder? Like, boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Bro, like, what? Parents that give you life, even though it's dark. At least you have, like, the dark is nice. The dark, the dark is solid. The dark is nice and great. At least when you're alone. Um, but lovely the children were like, um, how about not? <laughs> like, that's, like, exactly what we're not gonna do while Menendez, uh, Let's come up with another plan. And the children discuss various ways with themselves about how to separate their parents. Their brother, Tane, suggested that they just push them apart so that Papa, or not the Papa, so sorry. Tane suggested they push them apart so that their um, father, Ranji, and, uh, would be a stranger to them in the sky. And then that their mama, Papa, would still care for them here, there on Earth. And that's their plan. A strange plan, but a plan nonetheless. And one that is much better than murder. The story is gonna be a lot of them trying to find different ways to get, <laughs> to get them apart. To get their parents apart. Cause this is like the world's, literally the world's tightest hug. Like, they were not letting each other go at all. So Rango, the god of cultivated food, tried to push his parents apart. Then Tongaroa, the god of the sea, and his siblings, Hamuia, Tiki Tiki, uh, god of wild food, joined them. Ranji and Papa had still maintained their tight embrace. After many attempts, Tane, god of forests and birds, forced his parents apart. Instead of standing upright and pushing his hands, uh, pushing with his hands, as his brothers had done, um, he instead was on his back and pushed them apart with his strong legs, stretching every sinew. Tane pushes and pushes until, with cries of grief and surprise, Ranji Nui and Papa Tuanuku are pulled apart. After their separation of the parents, Tawirimatea, the god of storms and winds, is angered that his parents have been torn apart. Um, he hates the cries and tears of his parents. Henceforth, he promises that the siblings will forever feel his wrath. He joins forces with Ranji, who is now Papa in the sky and fosters his own offspring of winds. One of whom is sent to each corner of the compass to fight his brothers. Tawari Matea gathers a army of his children, winds and clouds of different kinds, including fierce squirrels, whirlwinds, gloomy thick clouds, fiery clouds, hurricane clouds, and thunderstorm clouds and rain and mist and fog. And these winds show their might. Um, the dust flies and the great forest trees of Tane are smashed under the attack and fall to the ground, food for decay and insects. Then Tawimari Matea attacks the seas and oceans and huge waves rise, whirlpools form. And Tangaroa, god of the sea, flees in panic. Punga, a son of Tangaroa, has two children, Ikatire, father of the fish, and Tute Wehiwehi, the ancestor of the reptiles. Terrified by Tirimara's onslaught of the fish, onslaught the fish, seek shelter in the sea, and the reptiles in the forest. Ever since Tangaroa has been angry with Tane for giving refuge to his runaway children. So it is that 
Kane supplies the descendants of Tumatawodenga with canoes, fish hooks, and nets to catch the descendants of Tongaroa. Tongaroa retaliates by sweeping canoes and sweeping away houses, lands, and trees that are washed out to the sea in floods. Tawiri Matea next attacks his brothers Rongo and Haurami Tiki Tiki, the gods of cultivated and uncultivated foods. Rongo and um, Mia are in great fear of Tawiri Matea, but as he attacks them, Papa determines to keep these for her other children and hides them so well that Tawiri Matea cannot find them. So Tawiri Matea turns on his brother Tuma Tuinga, uses all his strength, but Tuma Tuinga cannot prevail against him. Tu, or mankind, stands fast, and at last the anger of the gods is succeeded and peace prevailed. One caveat to that piece is that Tuma Tuma Tatue Tenga eats all his brothers to repay them for their cowardice. The only brother that Tuma Tua Tenga does not subdue is Tuwuri Matea, whose storms and hurricanes attacked mankind to this day. Tane searched for heavenly bodies as lights so that his father would be appropriately dressed. He obtained stars and threw them up, along with the moon and the sun. At last, Ranji looked handsome. Ranji and Papa continue to grieve each other to this day. Aw, Ranji Nui's tears fall towards Papa Taka, Papa Tawa Nuku to show how much he loves her. Sometimes Papa Taka Nuku leaves and strains and almost breaks herself apart to reach her beloved partner again, but it is to no avail. When mist rises from the forest, these are Papa Tua Nuku size as the warmth of her body yearns for Ran Jimmy and continues to nurture mankind. Oh, that is so beautiful. I love how there's so many stories about how like our modern world has come to be. Oh, just like the part of the end really breaks my heart for Ranji and Papa. I mean, Earth and the Sky are one. You know, it's it's beautiful. It's such a beautiful imagery. Um, <clears throat> I love how, <laughs> like, uh, t- uh, the, all the brothers, everyone's afraid of Tawiri Matea, the god of the winds, and he just gives everyone the hard time. But, I mean, I guess I can understand. Like, he's upset that his parents are upset, but also, like, if together, there would be no wind. But, I don't know, this is so fascinating to me. And these people are believe so I am respectful but also I just I don't know I'm fascinated I just love this so much said Ranjinui's tears fall towards Papa Tuanuku to show how much he loves her sometimes Papa Tuanuku heaves and strains and almost breaks herself apart to reach her beloved partner again but to no avail when mist rises from the forest, these are Papa Takanui size. As when her body yearns for Ranji Nui, he's nurturing mankind. And it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful imagery of like how love is so natural to uh, people and all living things. So now that we've gone over that whole story, you're probably wondering, well, Dominique, what does it all mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? And basically, the various friction of the gods in the story of the Maori creation are supposed to help explain the interaction. Are supposed to help explain, helped meant to help explain the interrelationship of natural forces in the world as well as the friction human relationships. All theme themes in Maori creation myths, all Maori narratives have about the creation of the world have some major themes in common. These include the movement from nothing to, or darkness to something or light, um, 
inspiration of Earth and Sky and the work of gods in fashioning the natural world. In the Mara tradition, the central act of creation is the drama of separation between the earth and the sky. It depends with nothingness, darkness, out of which, you know, sky father and earth mother emerge, join together, but eventually the children tore them apart. But um, once they're torn apart, lightness, light can enter the world. Lightness and light can enter the world. Finally, the story explains how the children of Earth and Sky became key figures or deities of various domains of the natural world. For example, Tane, the Atua, Divine Presence of Forest, or Tangara of the Sea. Weaving together these deities in a vast genealogy is the traditional Maori method of explaining the natural world and its creation. Which is so fascinating. And then there are different versions of the tribal creation story. Um, one of them is the Io tradition or Io tradition, and they can vary along different tribes. But um, you know, the creation tradition is compelling and influence all aspects of life. In this way, customs, practices, and institutions have become expression in a culture's foundation story. Many aspects of the Maori worldview are influenced by the essential elements of the Maori creation narrative. Which is exciting. It's exciting to learn about, um, I guess, how many different ways people across time and across the globe have imagined the creation of the world. Because I mean, Christianity where I grew up, because I from the U.S. Um, you learn that God created everything in seven days, or six days, and then seven days he rested. And um, just think of there might actually, like, personifying the sky and the earth and saying that they were hugging and then they had to separate them which kind of feels sad like I feel bad for Ranji and Papa they just wanted to hug each other forever I totally feel bad I have anxiety um but yeah that's all I have for you today with this story of Ranji and Papa from the Maori tribe thank you so much for my tribe of New Zealand and wherever you are in the world um if you're Maori tribe Maori people sorry Maori people and any other Pacific Highlander from Polynesia, Micronesia, or Melanesia, feel free to leave a comment down below to me if I did a good job of explaining it. Um, <laughs> and um, let me know where you're from. But anyways, if you haven't already, make sure you like this video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time, next Monday. Bye!